Let's rank every Valorant agent from worst to best in ranked for episode 8 in my opinion. In dead last place, I'm going to be putting Harbor. Overall, his kit can be viable in pro play, but for the most part in ranked, all of his utility is fairly underwhelming. I believe the Viper wall is a better wall as it gives decay damage and his ultimate can be easily countered. In 22nd place, we have Neon. Honestly, this is a hot take since you see creators doing crazy Neon movement like Temet, which is extremely flashy, but the overall impact Neon can get compared to the other duelists in the game makes me put her down here. The stuns in Valorant don't work very well honestly and her ultimate was nerfed for some reason and her wall is basically a worse version of the Phoenix wall in my opinion. In 21st place, we have ISO. Honestly, ISO is just not that good of a duelist. Since they have no movement abilities, the wall is very thin so enemies can peek around it, and the double tap is fairly useless because in most cases, you'll be traded before you can even shoot the orb, so his undercut is the only thing viable in his kit, which is still not that good overall in my opinion. And if you're one of the many people who struggle with high ping and packet loss, you need to check out Gear Up Booster. Gear Up Booster is a free software that stabilizes your internet and boosts your game with one easy click, making your ping stay at the lowest possible ping and no more random ping spikes. Oftentimes, your ISP and the game server don't have a direct path to each other, so Gear Up Booster can help provide the best routing to the server for you and it's safe to use with no bans or timeouts on your account. And if you're a console player, you can also use the game router Hyper AV, which ensures faster game downloads, improved gaming performance, and it's multi-platform compatible. And with Gear Up Booster on, I currently have 10 ping to Virginia servers, and other creators like Joel also use Gear Up Booster, so you know it's legit. But check out the link in the pin comment or description, and tell me in the comment section if you have a lower ping than me. In 20th place, we got Breach who's a fairly decent agent in pro play, but in rank, it's very hard to get your team to actually push or peek with your breach flashes or your breach stun or even the ultimate, which makes it so much harder to get value out of this agent when your no comm instalog jet is lurking mid instead of dashing on a blind and stunned enemy. In 19th place, we got Sage. And I mean, honestly, the only person I really see play Sage anymore is Grim, and that's because he's always got a creative wall to make an off angle for himself, but the Sage heal is a worse heal than the Sky heal, and the wall is often instantly broken, so playing another agent like Cypher or Killjoy is just so much more viable to anchor sites or map control and give you and your team information. In 18th place, we got Asher. She's got a similar problem to Breach in my opinion. Asher can be very strong provided that your team is actually communicating and playing off the stuns and sucks correctly. But if you have teammates that lurk mid on Reyna instead of entering the site on the suck and stunned enemies, it's pretty hard to get value out of almost half of the kit making your life much harder. In 17th place, we got Phoenix. Honestly, Phoenix has, in my opinion, some of the more predictable flashes in the game and it doesn't allow for much creativity as well as the fact that his wall and molly don't allow for much self heal compared to a reina devour the ultimate is probably the best part of the kit since for only six orbs you can basically have a second life but i still think that the lack of movement ability for entry potential makes jet and raise a better option for attack in 16th place we got deadlock for a while deadlock was probably the worst agent in the game but after the buff to the wall she's able to block off multiple choke points with a single wall and the sonic sensors can be used situationally better now but since they can literally be shift walked past on flank it's pretty hard to justify a deadlock pick over Killjoy or Cypher, which have trips and turrets to hold down your flank properly. In 15th place, we got KO. I honestly personally love KO, but after they nerf the flash, it's now harder to make solo plays with your flashes, and the zero point doesn't give you precise info on where the enemy team is playing, unlike a Sova Dart or Fade Haunt or even a Sky Dog, making them worse for information gathering, and in my opinion, you need to play double initiator for them to be truly effective, which is very rare in ranked. In 14th place, we got Fade, which again, due to the Fade nerf to the Prowler, I think the Sky Dog provides much more value at the moment, and with the current map pool in ranked, Sky is typically always going to be more viable than Fade on maps like Split or Bind because of the Flash, as well as on maps like Ascent, Sova is more viable than Fade. In 13th place, we got Yoru, who I believe is actually one of the better duelists in the game currently, but they also have a huge skill ceiling, so it takes a ton of game sense and great utility usage to play this agent at a high level. Yoru has also been in the game for a while, so not as many people fall for the fake clones, which is what makes Ziptai's clips so much better. In 12th place, we got Brimstone. He's the thickest agent in Valorant, and he's also got the longest lasting smokes in the game. 
at 19.25 seconds compared to Astra Smoke of 14.25 seconds, which allows for you to delay pushes for around 4 seconds longer on average, as well as the ultimate is great for post plants and can be combined with a molly lineup to basically single-handedly win your team a post plant situation. In 11th place, we got Gecko, who after their buffs, I think is a much more viable agent now, especially on maps like Lotus or Sunset, the wingman for plants and diffuse makes Gecko a really solid pick. Dizzy is also fairly good for information and can be used multiple times in the same round and the ultimate is probably the best part of Gecko's kit in my opinion. It basically guarantees your team gets a free sight and I would actually go as far to say as it's better for a sight take than Killjoy's ultimate currently is. In 10th place we got Chamber. After the Chamber buffs he's now in a place where he's actually viable now in my opinion to play it as more of an aggressive secondary duelist since his trip isn't very good for sight holds. You have to play Chamber in a fairly aggressive manner and fight for map control with your teleport. This allows for you to entry and take early fights on defense and teleport away after getting a pick. He's also basically got a pocket guardian at all times with an insanely fast pullout time and his ultimate is literal operator so for eco rounds this is Chamber time to shine. In ninth place we got Sky. Sky is still a very solid pick on most maps even after the nerf she's currently meta on maps like split and bind but the nerf to her flash not regenerating makes her get a little less value when it comes to flashing for information and I think the nerf to her dog makes it a bit harder to get information out of it now since you cannot turn the camera while jumping in it. In eighth place we got Killjoy who's currently the second best sentinel in my opinion. They have a great delay potential with their molly and alarm bot setups and they can also use their turret and alarm bot to hold down multiple areas of map control for their team on the map. They also have one of the best ultimates in the game for retakes and sight takes in my opinion but after their nerf to the turret and multiple nerfs throughout the years and the buffs to Cypher recently I think they have fallen from the best sentinel spot to second best. In seventh place we got Viper who's basically a must pick on Breeze and Icebox. If you're not picking her on these maps you are absolutely trolling. Her wall is a must to smoke off large areas like B side on Icebox or A side on Breeze to allow for you and your team to entry and scale up correctly. Her molly lineups are also still solid when comboed with a smoke orb and her ultimate is also insane for holding down an entire bomb site in post plant or just on defense to hold down a bomb site which makes her so valuable and you'll often see her in pro play as a second controller to deny information and lurk making her possibly one of the best controllers currently. In 6th place we got Cypher because they are basically currently the perfect sentinel. You can use one way cages to get easy frags on defense, you can also make creative tripwire setups to catch enemies off guard, and they also currently have the best flank watching utility. Cypher is also the best sight holding agent since the trips will regen if not broken, so you can no longer counter a Cypher setup just by running through it with a sky dog, which makes them especially hard to play against and almost forces players to pick Sova or Raze so they're able to shock dart or blast pack the trips. In 5th place we got Omen. Omen allows you to play a mixed playstyle of controller with the option to either play aggressive and go for teleport plays with the flash like flex ninja or play passive and lurk like Marv. The flash also has the ability to basically stop an entire push on defense and blind an entire lane to help your team entry on attack. Or you could use the flash for yourself to flash teleport on an enemy which is also viable and the ultimate can be used to grab the spike off the floor which makes him extra viable in case you accidentally lose the spike to the other team. In 4th place we got Sova since again the shock darts to counter Cypher automatically give him a ton of value. The drone and dart also provide a ton of value and I would almost say is a must pick on maps like Ascent and Icebox and a fairly viable pick on most maps other than Split and Lotus. The ultimate is also very strong in post plant situations or on defense to stop an enemy when you hear them planting the spike which overall in my opinion makes them one of the best initiators at the moment for rank. In third place we got Raze since a single Raze blast pack is able to break a Cypher tripwire setup and you typically are going to see Cypher almost every game at this point which makes it so much easier for your team to be able to entry. Raze's blast packs are also really good for movement when entering the site allowing you to scale fast and the nade is really strong for stopping an entire push on defense. The boombot also gives you info on attack or defense which makes Raze almost a duelist and initiator hybrid. And the ultimate is another bonus where you have a rocket for an almost guaranteed frag as long as you don't resolve. In second place we got Reyna since in all honesty having the ability to self heal twice around makes you have the ability to take multiple solo fights and you also have a dismiss to get out of a bad position and reposition to your team. The ultimate is fairly mid since it's basically just your normal abilities with a brimstone stim beacon and the flash isn't that good overall but if you are a very good mechanical player Picking Reyna allows for you to solo carry games much easier and this is why you often see smurfs locking Reyna so that they can solo carry the game. In first place we got Jet. The Jet Dash alone is in my opinion the best ability in the game. It's like a Reyna dismiss but they don't actually have to get a frag to use it 
So if you miss, you can just reposition with your dash. This makes opping on jet extremely strong, but unlike chamber with jet, you can also jet dash on attack to entry into your own smoke which makes you harder to hit and also makes Jet's entry potential better than Raze's because of that. Jet's ultimate is also really strong for eco rounds, which allows you to possibly single-handedly win a round that you'd have no chance winning otherwise. The Jet Smokes can also be used to create one-ways for yourself almost anywhere, allowing you to get easy frags, and the updraft allows for you to updraft above tripwires or killjoy and molly setups, making Jet an overall perfect duelist and the most well-rounded. Here's a look at the completed tier list. Let me know if you agree, and if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe.